morning everyone and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It's Monday, April 19th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Miles, BC. Anyways, uh, I'm just glad that we can continue this series in the parables of Jesus. Some very rich stories that bring out spiritual lessons. Today we're going to continue into a parable called uh, The Rich Man and Lazarus and it's found in Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31 and Jesus tells the story there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table even the dogs came and licked the sores the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side the rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was, in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called out to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received all good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us is a great chasm that is fixed, and those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn him, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So in this story here, we see that Jesus contradicts, uh, or con not contradicts, contrasts these two men, a rich man and um, a man who he calls Lazarus. And it's almost like this is a real story for this Lazarus. I don't think there's another parable where a person's name is brought forward. Lazarus is a name. And uh, it could be that Lazarus, um, he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead um, during his lifetime. Jesus, while he walked on the earth, it could be a significant fact that uh, needs to be considered. But um, nevertheless, this rich man had all that he desired in life, and he was dressed um, in the finest clothes and feasted every day. But this man did not have a heart that was towards God. On the flip side was this poor crippled beggar named Lazarus who laid at the rich man's gate, and he longed for the food that fell from the rich man's table. Well, in the days of Jesus, um, very rich people in that culture would eat and uh, they eat with their hands, and, and after they were done feasting, they would clean their hands with, um, with hunks of bread, and then they'd throw the bread out onto the street. And, and this is what apparently Lazarus was waiting for. The rich man was comforted all the way through his life on the earth, and Lazarus was miserable, covered in sores, and um, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. And the day came for both men to leave the tent of their bodies and enter the afterlife and both of them found themselves in Sheol now the the rich man died and he had a proper funeral and was buried and the, the poor beggar probably never even had a funeral and but nevertheless he was carried by angels to Abraham's side and, and um, what we see here is uh, they both end up in this place called Sheol, the place of the dead. And in Sheol, there is a separation between those who are wicked and those who are righteous. And that remains the case until the final judgment. Now, the children of God will find that they are ushered into paradise. Uh, people who reject the living Lord on the, on the flip side will find that they are placed in torment, awaiting their final judgment in hell. So the poor beggar man was a believer and he followed God and uh, the rich man did not follow God and after they died 
the rich man found himself in hell and the poor beggar Lazarus found himself in paradise, in a place of comfort at Abraham's side. So, now we should not think that Lazarus was saved by his poverty any more than we should think that the rich man was damned by his wealth. Lazarus must have had a true relationship of faith with God and, and, um, and the rich man must have rejected God. Their life circumstances uh, made faith maybe easier or more difficult, but they did not create it. So the truth is that at the appointed time, it is appointed unto each person to die once, and then comes the judgment. Every one of us alive here today is going to enter eternity. How things go for our future uh, depends on our relationship with God, and specifically now under the New Covenant, what each of us does with Jesus. Now we know that the New Testament teaches that Jesus is God's Savior given to the world for our salvation. He's God's gateway into eternal life. And when we place our trust in Jesus, God applies his sacrifice um, to our lives and our sins are forgiven. And then he clothes us in his righteousness and makes us his child, giving us eternal life. So when a believer dies, he or she is ushered into paradise, for it's written in 2 Corinthians 5, 6-8, that um, when we're absent in our, in our body as a believer, we're present with the Lord. Um, when Jesus was dying on the cross, for instance, and he was dying between two thieves who were dying for their crimes, one thief was mocking Christ and, and belittling Jesus and asking him to save himself and them. And, and the other thief was honoring of Christ and he recognized the Savior for who he was and he said, Jesus, when you enter your kingdom, when you enter, when you enter your kingdom, Lord, will you remember me? And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, that this day you will be with me in paradise. So the other man who was mocking Jesus would have ended up on the other side of Sheol called hell and the one that asked Jesus for mercy was forgiven and ended up in paradise. So, the man who places his trust in the things of this world and is not rich towards God will find that when he passes from this life, there is hell to pay for his disobedience. All of his luxuries and comforts and everything he works for to amass for himself in this earthly life will be taken away all at once. And he will have nothing that he worked so selfishly for during his life. Once again, in that place of torment, there is no relief and there's no opportunity to cross over to paradise. Once you're in hell, the fate is sealed. The sad part about this story is that even after death, this rich man, this rich man did not lose his sense of entitlement in his life on the earth. That rich man had the opportunity to be kind and generous and help poor Lazarus who was laying at his gate and was ignored. Now, even in the afterlife, the rich man thought that he was better than uh, Lazarus and considered Lazarus as his servant. He had the gall to ask Abraham to send Lazarus over to him to serve him and provide him relief from his torment in the fire. But um, there was no relief available for the rich man because in his life on the earth he was selfish and provided no relief for poor Lazarus who laid at his gate day after day. Now Jesus told this parable to illustrate that hell is terrible, hell is eternal, and that each person ought to ponder the path of their life here on the earth. Because the choices we make here to honor God or to dishonor Him determine where we're going to spend eternity. More specifically, Jesus has been offered as God's sacrifice. Will we accept Him or will we live life for ourselves? And, um, and if we live lives for ourselves, what do we expect in our future? Well, this story illustrates what we can expect. If we live our lives for ourselves, we will find that we will lose everything. Jesus said in John 12, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, but whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, my servant will be as well. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So in this case, we see Jesus saying that if we um, lose our life for him, Jesus says that if we deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him, we will find life. So if we die to self and we lay down our life for him, we'll find life in the end. So in laying down our lives, it means that we're willing to serve God and other people. And um, in serving other people, we're actually serving him. So this rich man, if he would have been a fear, having a fear for God, he would have looked at this poor Lazarus covered in sores and had mercy on him and acted like the good Samaritan that we see in, this, in another parable that Jesus told. But that's not the case. So at this point in the parable, we see the rich man sees that his course to spend eternity in hell is set and they can't, he can't cross over to paradise. And there's no remedial way, there's no purgatory. Once you cross over to the other side, you're not going to be able to change your circumstance. So now, in this state, the role of the rich man we see is reversed and he becomes a beggar and begs Abraham to send someone to warn his five brothers to change their lives on the earth so that they don't wind up in the place of torment that he's in. And he wants Lazarus again to serve him and his family and go and warn his brothers. And Abraham tells the rich man that his brothers have Moses and the prophets to warn them. This is referring to the writings of the Old Testament in the Bible. And the rich man says that, well, if only someone from, would, would come from the dead and, and rise from the dead and warn them, they would, they would listen. But Abraham said to the rich man that even if someone would be raised from the dead and speak with them, they still would not listen and, and repent. So the hardened state of people's hearts makes you wonder, you know, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, if he's speaking about the same Lazarus here, because, you know, maybe Lazarus was a poor beggar. I, I don't know. But Lazarus, it was raised from the dead. And um, shortly after Lazarus was raised from the dead, they crucified Jesus. Those people, they knew there was plenty of documented evidence that Lazarus had come back from the dead. And no doubt Lazarus was telling people that Jesus Christ was the Savior and he was the one that raised him. But would they believe? He, he, he went and warned them, listen, follow Jesus, follow the Savior, the Messiah is here with you. And they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen even though someone came back from the dead after four days and went and spoke to them. They would not listen. Man, this is the state of the heart of the world. It just seems like so many people have hardened their hearts. If you're hearing this message today and your heart is hard before God, oh, call out to Him while there's still time. Call out to Him and ask Him to have mercy on you. And if you're here and you're living life for the moment and you're living for yourself, repent. Turn, turn around from your, your, your sin and your disbelief in the Lord and serve Him and, and, and adopt the, the attitude of, of Christ with your fellow man. There's so much that we as Christians can do to provide relief in this world for people that are suffering. And we should really consider, consider how we live our lives. Do we live our lives for ourselves, Or do we live our lives for God? That is the question.